Months have passed since Momotaro went to Onigashima to deal with demons. His parents were waiting for fortune instead of their son's safety. They sensed him arrive. Gramps, Gramps, this is my wife, he said. She looked at them with disgust. His parents turned to petrified rocks. He introduced her to his parents. This is the demon princess, Ura, U. He didn't want demons and humans to fight, thus he took her as his wife. She started to threaten the building, saying it will take three seconds to empty it. She fell down onto something soft. Showing off herself like a Greek statue, she asked the Gramps for sake. From hell, they thought she came from. They wanted Mama Tarao to do something. He told her clothes were too revealing. She said it was her fashion and that males just wore a waistcloth. He grabbed his wife's hands, telling her she came to Japan. But she reacted when he grabbed her hands. She thought he was shameless to grab her hands. He thought exhibitions in was okay, but grabbing hands wasn't while writing it down in his head. He was staring at two fat trash bags. Staring at them, he realized that it's burnable trash day. He thought it was a male job to take it out thinking how his wife wouldn't do a single chore. He believed he was the representative of humanity and wouldn't allow himself to do all the chores. He told her he wanted to ask something, but instead she teleported to him, grabbing his face, saying, If you wish something from me, you will ask for it in your will. She also wanted all his possessions. She looked at the bags and asked him to take them out. She said she could take them out with a pause. She had a condition of wanting him to carry something as well. He thought it was a great idea to go along with it. A full moon night she was on top of her husband getting carried. She thought it was a splendid idea saying a man wouldn't go back on their words. She thought that in an instant she could break his neck relating him to an insect. His pride wouldn't allow him to. Thus he licked the crap out of her thighs taking advantage of the situation. She looked like she lost all of her savings in a bank account while dropping the trash. He licked his lips, savoring the test, calling them defenseless. During the morning, he suggested how they should call each other. He started thinking of the lore behind the couple nicknames. She thought just calling him Bastard was enough. He didn't agree and wanted something generic like Darling. She wanted them to call each other however they would like, but she wondered why he called her while he was worshipping. His pride fell once again and wanted to show dignity. His thoughts of what he was going to call her appeared. I shall call you my woman, he said. Turning embarrassed, she thought he was spouting nonsense. He thought this is how it is supposed to be, imagining all the situations he can say it. Ura thought it was ridiculous making it sound like they're in a boy-girl situation. Wait, they aren't? He pushed her to a wall, rizzing her up, saying, Calm down, my woman. She broke the sound barrier, screaming at him to not get over himself. He was thrown to another wall, collapsing onto the floor. She thought it was ridiculous, yelling, She is not his woman because he is a man. He responded, saying that it is a boy-girl relationship while trembling. He was at a tea house the next day, and his buddy congratulated him on getting married. He was asked how he met his wife. Onigashima is the place where he met his wife. Her minions reported he was last seen there. He sensed the presence of someone, and she pushed a stone towards him. She cackled herself to Momotaru laughing at him exterminating demons. She got a backshot of him naked with clean skin. Luckily, a bush saved us from getting the video taken down. They both scream as loud as possible. She thought he was a pervert asking why he was naked. Her minions came to help her up. He sensed the woman's strength and the two orcs weren't showing any openings. He decided he wouldn't move facing himself towards them. She was flustered and angered, wondering why he hadn't tucked it away. The orcs thought it was an opportunity to attack since he is naked. But the princess looked embarrassed, running off, making the orcs run off with her. She asked if the orcs noticed he was strong, even though his appearance was weak. The orc broke in a sweat, not being able to find a chance. He was wiping himself with a cloth he found. She asked where he got it from. Momotaru shouted for his clothes back. Flashing back to the bar, he got up and said he met his wife when he got peeped on while bathing, and his undies got stolen while making a jojo pose. He was thoughtful of his wife wanting to get a souvenir. In his imagination, when he got home with the gift her wife invited him to eat together, she then would seduce him, asking to be eaten, thinking the wife in his head is fabulous. The moment he got home, his wife was looking mad. She sniffed him, talking about a smell. She asked if she snatched the box and took the dango out. 
Momotaro wanted to eat it with her. Instead, she shoved it down her throat, calling it good. She walked away teasing him that it was just for her. He talked about his imagination. He wanted to eat with his sweet and cute wife. She was unsettled at the thought of cute. He exclaimed his imagination telling her she was completely lewd in it. She got pissed off and told him to, look at the real me. He compared her to his imagination, and she didn't get why he was doing this. He asked for food, but she yelled at him, telling him to chew on some rocks. He cuddled up in shame, wanting to eat together. She felt sympathy. She slid a dish towards him, calling him lucky she had some. The grandpa spoiled it wasn't by chance, and grandma said she wanted him to eat her cooking. Ura wanted to send them to the afterlife. She scared them both off, and he tanked her for the food. She didn't need the thanks. He looked at the wall, drooling, thinking it tastes like crap. He thought leaving the food is hell and eating it is hell. -ing.